Hi you guys! So I am doing a session for Samara today and she's exploring a psychic development package. So the first session is always a 30 minute journey healing and wisdom session. Um, and then the next session is so chakra removal session, which really um, allows all the energy bodies to get focused into the heart. So the heart portal gets expanded and we start working with our true divine essence. And then from there, there's a live psychic mentoring session to teach you how to do exactly what I do for a living. So um, this 30 minute session, um, um, for Samara, she's requesting that um, I remove all energy blocks and focus on um, getting her acclimated to grounding. So remove all energy blocks and grounding. So that's the focus. Um, and Samara, thank you so much for um, being open-minded to share this on YouTube because I really love the collective experience. So we're going to be exploring your soul together, learning from your soul. And I think there's just so much takeaway that we all experience from that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead here. Okay, remove energy blocks and grounding. Make sure my volume's off. Okay, I'm going to relax. I'm going to get connected with your spiritual atmosphere. Okay, there's some weird um, picture. And it looks like you, but then there's just tiny, two tiny little horns on your head. And like a grayish black color. So I'm just, I'm looking at this and exploring what this means. Um, as I go into this scene, I, there's a terrible, like, blubbery, um, energy wrapped around the throat and it's very um, suffocating like a, a t um, it's like you know in the winter time you put a scarf on it's kind of like a really oversized scarf but it's um, tied too tight but this is a blubbery substance um, it's a dark red color and it's around the throat and then it has like an extension that goes into the emotions and it's really wanting you to sit upright and um, be on your best behavior or fit in or I, I can't I mean it, it has a an influence it's influencing you to be a certain way okay and unfortunately it's, it's sort of getting worse before it gets better here so I'm trying to remove it right but at the same time it's wanting to kind of circulate it directly into the throat region and once it goes into the throat region it goes up into the head and then it gets really like it doesn't want you to be able to see out of your third eye um, and it's a literally very blubbery And so it's all getting it's congregating into your mental body right now. And also, I mean, there's this extended thing into the gut area. I'm not able to really see where it's going very clearly. So I'm just going to continue to see this most loudest aspect of it right now. Why, what is going on with this? As I look into your mental body, which the blubbery thing, it just looks like it's in your head and then it's just covering up this so you're not able to see anything. And then all the while I see you sitting on a chair and it's a the chair has a light blue colored canvas backing and then um, a little light blue colored like pad that you sit on. And what it, the room is very hard to make out in detail. Is the floor not there? Um, is it a plain white room? Are you sitting in the center of the room? Um, it feels like something is blown out on the floor of this. You're also sitting very straight and looking straight ahead. But you're a human being, you know, you're a human being, so you you need to be more dynamic and more movable, more flexible, but you're very kind of like clenched together and um, not allowing the, the fluid energy to just flow through you. There's just a lot of really extreme resistance. Ah, it's like really around the throat again, um, and then I feel it again in the energetic gut region, emotional gut region. 
And it just says resist, 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 resist a million times over. It like extremely echoes that resist. And this blubbery thing um, keeps kind of like, it's like a really round, it's like a snake and an eel, um, but it's also really squishy. And it's like a worm too. So it likes to kind of maneuver around. And the more that you choose to resist, the more that it feels like it's in control of you. And when it's in control of you and you resisting who being who and what you are, um, now it can actually... Um, find a home here <laughs> because if you're too much yourself your energy frequency is much too too high and intolerable for this so i don't know what this frequency it's sort of working with challenging you it's definitely challenging you but how did it get in there in the first place my spirit guides say well samara let this frequency in samara allowed it to come in because sometimes we feel safer when when the message is to resist and we resist now we don't have anything to worry about because if we don't resist and we go into the experience now this experience could be anything it could be any number of experiences so it's always safer to not participate because if we participate it could be bad and we never will know that if it could be good either but but because it could be bad then we um, we safeguard ourselves from a negative experience. So it's better that we don't have an you know we safeguard ourselves than we actually um, challenge ourselves. So um, resisting then um, creates safety. So when I say the word um, instead of challenging yourself to have a vast a diverse experience, um, it would be much easier to resist it and then stay in a safe place. Um, there's a little bit of energetic upset that I feel from deep inside yourself because you actually do like challenges. And so this kind of makes you feel a little bit angry because you really do like a challenge and you're not um, a scaredy cat kind of thing. You're not like that. But yet at the same time, there is a huge um, choice to resist. And the choice to resist is always um, um, happening because we're afraid of what go comes after this, like what is beyond this. As human beings, we're like this, and expansion is terrifying. <laughs> and that's normal, actually. Like I even I'm yeah, I like I have to continue to upgrade and upgrade and upgrade and upgrade, and I still have visions of things, even at this level where it's almost intolerant. I'm intolerant of that awareness. And it might take me several weeks, but I choose acceptance instead of backing up um, or saying um, I want to shut down from it. So I choose acceptance of it. I, I choose to process it from a higher place of awareness, peace and acceptance. And the more that I choose to accept it and I work with my guides to help me through acceptance, then I can become stronger. Then I go to the next level and now I can be a much wiser healer and speaker for the human race, right? Um, so there's something about you you got to adjust to um, you are actually prepared, believe it or not, um, to start developing your psychic gifts. But um, you're, there's the unknown, um, what, what, what it could look like. And believe it or not, um, there's something, I, I'm just going to throw it out there. It's really hard for me to actually get to into that frequency vein. It's really soft, but, um, you could imagine, let's just say this, that there's a, a life past life, um, that your soul is still working through and now it's working through it in this life. And in this past life, you had awoken to psychic gifts or spiritual ability and then had um, a negative um, happen because the infinite universe is going to test us and challenge us. So human beings test us and challenge us too. And not every lifetime is going to be a warm, fuzzy experience. Sometimes it's going to be life or death experience. Sometimes it's going to involve war. Sometimes it's starvation. Sometimes we lose the love of our life and we can't live the next 40 years alone. Like it's going to have extreme experiences. So the spirit realm can be unbelievably blissful and like, like, ah, ah, you know, inspiring and so full of love that it also can shock you and um, it can challenge you um, because some of the things that you come across out there are stuff you haven't worked on yet within yourself. So anything that's chaotic or scary that you might come across
across in the spirit realm is actually um, helping you as the mirror of something wounded within your own journey that you need to heal and release. And when you release it, then you discover that everything, you, you rise above that place of, um, of interaction and you become just lighter and full of love and you continue to move and grow and go forward. So something of another lifetime where... Um, a you're ready to open up psychic gifts in this lifetime, but now there's this resistance because something of the other lifetime hasn't fully mended or healed from what would be like a psychic experience that was negative. Um, and now you're still unsure because it could be negative, right? Um, but you're actually, your soul is ready to prove to you that it's not always negative. So you could have a lot of lifetimes, for instance, where um, you never meet the one. And so you, you have um, arranged a marriage with somebody you're not in love with. Um, and then you know, next time around, you, you meet like the one and then they end up dying of a terrible illness. And you, you, you never, the next person in line or the next person you, you meet, it never really captivates you in the same way. So you could have all these lifetimes where the love isn't fully there. And now you enter into future lifetimes feeling like you're not meant for love. You're not meant to. So now you have your soul wants to teach you that yes true love can exist but you have to work on acceptance of what you do receive in life so here we have an experience where you could have like a um, your soul is still connected to an idea that happened before this lifetime and now your soul or your higher self is wanting to prove to you that it's not always negative that it, it can be positive in order for you to see the dark and the light side of the experience the, the best and awesomest side and the not so awesomest side, but to realize that both are true and both are wonderful and both teach us about ourselves. But this is really positive. Like, um, please don't worry about negative stuff because this is really s emphasizing that um, you're going to have a lot of amazing, bountiful, really positive <clears throat> spiritual psychic experiences. Like it's, it's really loud that that's that you actually I, it's really loud that you have like a destiny to be a psychic. Um, so it's really loud um, in here. And I don't usually tell people that. So that's kind of a cool thing to tell you. Um, that it's your destiny. <laughs> so if it is your destiny, then you can choose to resist that destiny and never step into it. So was it truly your destiny? Yeah, <laughs> you just chose not to step into it. You chose to resist it. So if you choose to resist it, then you'll have an, a, an a, a totally alternate pathway of experiences that'll have nothing to do with with what you can truly like. What could truly like enrich your life? So destiny is interesting because if we resist a certain avenue that that um, is extraordinary but maybe too overwhelming for us, we'll never know what that actually looks like. Um, and so then we will stay on an alternative pathway, which is also our destiny. If we choose that pathway, if we choose to resist this other thing, then there's other options. There always is. There's a million, 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 trillion options of directions that you can take, depending on how emotionally ready you are. <laughs> you just, you decide. But this, this actually, this is gonna, this, I'm feeling energy shifting already and it's helping your deeper consciousness to say, I am ready for this. And you saying, I am ready for this is all you have to say to, for this worm to release from your spiritual atmosphere. I'm getting your soul to actually say it. Like your soul, like this concern or this vulnerability is so, sort of in the soul level. Okay, next thing, um, it tells me that it's broken, and these pictures are really, like, kind of unique to you, um, Samara, because they're, they're, all, they're a bit difficult to see, um, but that's part of the message in its own right, but this is sort of like a, you could imagine, um, I'm looking from the shadow through what are planks of wood, and there's, they're kind of all, um, it's sort of a circular opening that I'm looking through, but it's very jagged, it, like a big fist, like a giant's fish, giant's fist punched through these boards. And now I'm sort of looking from the shadow through. Um, and so what I see through is um, half of it is white and half of it is black. And um, what is out there? So what does that mean? That's a very complicated image to try to make sense of. 
And as I try to go through or go beyond the space, I just keep running into a wall and all I get to see through the opening is is white or black, but I don't see any um, any anything like I don't see any images. Um, I don't see colors. I don't see um, I just see white and black. So you could imagine you could have a um, let's say the vision is a beautiful garden with flowers and butterflies and there's lovely um, spirit consciousness that are um, in this. But if we take Take white paint and we just paint over that part, paint black over this part. Now we just see white and black and, and then we're not going into the dimensionality of the space itself. We're just seeing it flat. Um, so now we're having a, a psychic experience that is getting us nowhere. Um, it's not, it doesn't have any dimensionality. What creates dimensionality is emotion. <laughs> now it actually, um, but it's more than that. They're telling me it's more than just, um, just accessing the emotional aspect of the experience. Um, but there's something else here. So let's see what the next thing is. Just so you know, that worm energy is a way, it's almost evaporated. It's a, like so light. I can still experience a little bit of its frequency, but it's like ridiculously light. And I don't, I, there's nothing around here, especially like it's almost totally gone. So let's keep focusing on this. Okay, this next thing is, I'm still looking at the same image, but it has to do with you choosing to see how truly special you are. Um, like that you have a, a beautiful soul. It, you came here with a very special purpose. I think you know this deep down inside yourself, but um, you're still kind of not embracing it on the level that you could embrace it. Um, so you're choosing to kind of stick with a more human dynamic of living, a more structured, logical human direction. Um, so in that way, you're creating, it's getting flat, um, but you're really used to just, let's just stick with the human side of things. That's what your comfort zone is when really you're on a bigger lesson and that's really fun and really special and cool. That is encouraging you to just stop, get the breakdown of the the human um, insisting on being the human frequency and start transitioning into being the spiritually awakened, um, ascended version of yourself. And when that happens, you will be shocked by how you actually speak. I can't explain it. Um, they keep showing me that um, what are like goddess messages coming out of your voice, um, but they're speaking from your heart. So they're sort of manifested in your heart, but you express them um, and it's like a goddess speaking. Um, and the messages are really influential, very, fe very divine feminine oriented um, and very like, it's really captivating to hear them. It's very captivating to hear them. And you have never, I, I don't get the, I don't feel in this vibe that you've taken the time to actually experience yourself as a incarnated goddess. I see, I see a, a frequency of a woman that is very connected to um, beautiful, abundant, blossoming flowers um, and flowers with beautiful fragrances and reminding people of the beauty of creation. But you remind them through your presence, through the way that you you speak from from the, the space of love. Um, I just keep seeing what is a beautiful, really rich garden. And it ha like it has a tropical effect to it, but also has the effect of being sort of like like mountain um, wildflowers while also having the effect of being like plains land flowers, like flowers of all different kinds from all different type of biospheres um, blossoming and expressing their creative energy and their gift of just beauty and and refreshing sort of um, it's very refreshing to the senses. And this is what is um, coming from deep within yourself. And part of your psychic um, development is coming from truly embracing who you are and knowing who you are and choosing to experience it, not just say, okay, well, that's pretty cool. Um, I'm a goddess. No, you, you have to really 
you have to play out the rule. Like when you walk down the street, feel the, these feet are the goddess feet that are walking down the street and this presence and but smile at people and be thankful that for these souls and um, share your light with them even without saying a word um, and just be a bright light because I don't know what it is, but I, you, if you choose to do this, people will see you and they will find that light very, very refreshing. It almost seems overwhelming. Like you might be too bright. Like, like it might be very noticeable. Like, like, like everybody is seeing you. Everybody <laughs> almost it's like, I'm not, I'm not, I like in this moment, I'm seeing you at a coughing shop and you're just so bright. And it's like, everybody's head is turned and they're like looking at you. <laughs> It's a weird way. I was like, well, that's, that's all, like kind of weird actually, but um, but it's actually because they're seeing you because of their feeling that warmth radiating from deep within yourself. And it's who you truly are. It's actually who you truly are. And so you can be human or you can go beyond that and be your spirit. And so now what is blocking you from your psychic ability? You have to choose to see yourself either as a human or a, a, a goddess emanation. And when you choose to be a goddess emanation, you work with love and you allow love in and you emanate love and you speak from love. And it's a totally different way or balance of, ex of, of expression, not just from voice, but through body language too. You, there's something you, a part of you still is holding yourself back and you just you i keep hearing the words resist 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 over and over and over again and that worm thing i don't feel the worm but now i experience that you are the one you're trying to um put boards up um so that you can't even see the white and the black like you, you just you keep wanting to put boards up and get create even more thickness and um resistance for seeing beyond so some part of you is just working very very hard very very diligently to create more um resistance 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 And you, it's very, so I see, um, also I feel out what is another version of you that was, that's like much like a really beautiful inner child, but the inner child is starting to feel kind of rigid and like a board. Um, and so it can't um, fight back against resistance. And once it becomes like made out of wood or something, it starts to resonate with the resistance and then it just chooses to be the human. Um, because the human makes sense. We know it's logical, like it's what we've known our whole life. Um, so again, everything's getting very stiff and rigid and it doesn't want to, um, it doesn't want to set the spirit free. You, part of yourself is not wanting to set your own spirit free, which is actually what's the next step on your journey. Okay, what is this next thing? <sighs> Anger. Anger lashing out on the self, being too hard on the self. It's very hard to make this out because it just, it wants to muffle its own behaviors. And it's very rigid and very strict. <sighs> A lot of energy shifting going on here and I can feel it around my head, my uh, mental body region, which is also your mental body region. I feel like there are really extreme and rigid expectations of myself as a little girl. I don't know that this is coming from this lifetime, but um, I have, feel like I have a very strict mother um, who has very extreme demands of me. I I mean, it's almost, it's too much. We're looking at like a, a five-year-old girl, six-year-old girl at most. 
and the way she has to be dressed, her hair, um, the way she has to stand so straight where you put a book on her head and it won't fall off. Like the expectation of even standing very straight and sturdy are uh, way overboard. Um, and she should better be able to balance a book on her head without it falling off at by age six because she is to be a lady. Like, But it's really demonically extreme. It's really... It's terrible. It doesn't give her the room to be creative and childlike. It's forcing her to be an adult at age six and to care about adult things that don't matter at age six. Because does it really matter that you stand up straight and don't let the book fall off of your head? Um, obviously, there is something um, glamorous about somebody with really beautiful posture um, and holds their head up. Um, there's something lovely about that um, energy, but it's it's like torture. It's torturing this little girl. And um, the expectations for how she's to do her schoolwork for hours, it's like um, it's almost like the the perfect letters and the numbers and um, but everything. It almost it's like she comes from a very well-to-do family, so she's got music um, and arts. Like she has to be the best at everything. And is so rigid and such high expectations and some sort of a school teacher it's she's from a very well-to-do family and so it's some sort of mentor that they have hired that's what it's kind of like but she would be like a renowned um, mentor because she teaches little girls how to grow up to be ladies very proper ladies and children need a harsh um, harsh upbringings like children need a very harsh teacher that keep them in line and keep them focused and keep them their behavior in check and so there's some sort of belief that the harsher and the more, more demonically extreme the teacher the the more chances that you know she's going to grow up straight and narrow and like a lady she should be but perfect in every way perfect with everything this one is also, um, I see this awful teacher has a very long stick and um, she is shoving it like a pot poker or something into your heart. Um, and she can, she can beat you with the stick if she wants to. But in this scene, um, she is poking it into your heart and she's, she is like a witch of a soul on the inside. And she's got really awful, awful spiritual essence about her. But I, you know, I can just stand here and watch and I, I understand how we learn. We learn from chaos and we learn from love. And both sides of the yin and the yang of the universe are what create the whole, right? So even though this is not very cool, um, it's also quite creates diversity and, and extraordinary souls and extraordinary human beings. But this soul also is in learning too. The one that is very horrendous and evil towards this little girl that is um, a reflection of yourself. The little girl never speaks up um, and she's also starting to, her eyes, like she has to look into her eyes, but her eyes want to look down in a way. And it's almost, it's really intimidating. And there's some sort of weird kick that this sort of evil teacher gets out of challenging her eyes to look into her own eyes. And this girl never finds the courage to do it. Because it's just overwhelming. It's very intimidating. Which means that you're soft and weak. But um, the expectation was never for you to stay looking into her eyes as a, an extreme challenge, but almost like she wanted to see if you could do it. And if you couldn't do it, then you are weak or soft, but she's going to keep beating you too in her own way. This one's also what are this, this story, this frequency, this echo is starting to relax and to release. Do you don't need to hold on to that anymore? Because you need to see that, you know, flowers don't need to be whipped and beaten and um, threatened in order to grow into the goddess emanations that they are. And you don't need that either. 
you can be the flower that you are and you can open up to this world and you can just be the light that you are and now you are a goddess emanation you are the love of your soul and the psychic ability comes from love comes from nowhere else but love from within your heart um, they're taking me to a really beautiful scene with a waterfall It's very, it's emotional, um, there's a message in this, and we see what is a lovely angel, and it's the love that is here tenderly nurturing you, and this angel is actually helping you to um, feel purification of the body, the spirit, etc., um, in the water, and he is so patient and kind, and I feel like there is a deep love that your souls actually share with each other, like even having spent incarnated lifetimes together. But he is here to help nurture you through this lifetime as his angel emanation and you as a human. And he's just very soft and very patient and just kind, <laughs> very sweet. He wants you to see he wants you to actually play pretend or imagine um, a field of flowers and he wants you to take a look um, at one flower in the field um, and just what does that flower look like um, is it like a tulip is it um, like a wild like a fire weed like a wild flower um, does it have little tiny flowery buds that go up a, a straight line or is it just one blossom um, is it bright yellow? Is it pink? Is it blue? Is it purple? Is it, you know, what color is the flower? He wants you to take some time to actually look at this one flower and then um, look to the right or look to the left to see what the other flowers look like as well. And to take your time to look at this garden. This is a visualization, but it's getting you acclimated to seeing colors and spiritual colors. Um, and getting you acclimated to smelling, psychically smelling. So he wants you to smell the fragrance of this flower um, and experience it within yourself. Even if there's no scent to it, you're choosing to receive the scent. We receive the fragrance. And it's okay if you don't energetically smell anything. But the choice to, to say I am receiving the smell is actually activating your ability to psychically smell. And you just have to continue to work with it. But as you continue to look at what are like four different types of flowers, um, he, he wants you then to look up and to see, um, actually create the image of himself standing there watching you this entire time. He's been watching over you as you're exploring and he is smiling and encouraging you to enter into this visualization, the imagination space even more. Um, to stand up, to not be at the level of the flowers, but to stand up and now um, to walk towards him. Um, and if he can only, you know, he could be five miles away or he could be right in front of you, but you just gravitate towards him and allow yourself to feel his arms and his wings wrap around you, okay? And experience him hugging you. Um, to energetically feel it in your imagination, this hug, okay? This is a technique you can take away. And his wings are around you. But it's interesting because I discover that you are smelling his fragrance and you are discovering that he is the best smelling flower <laughs> that you have had in all of these other flowers you've explored. And he's kind of got like a suave, um, apparently he's wearing some kind of cologne or something and he's winking at you. <laughs> he's just sort of like very handsome, um, but he's the best smelling flower um, and he's just an emanating white light and he's so, he's really, um, I really enjoy his um, personality and just the way he feels, very patient and sweet and just loving, but he's watching over you and um, to keep doing what you are doing and whenever you need to just know that he is there or to receive him um, start by to, by creating your own visualization um, let's try you visualizing the waterfall and actually see the water 
Um, now touch the water with your energy imagination hand. Touch the water. Now step your whole body into the water. Um, and have the experience of feeling the water falling down upon you. And when you feel clean, allow yourself to see that he was standing there all along. And just choose to, to d design his identity yourself. Okay, there's his wings and there he is standing there. And now you feel him smiling at you because he was there all along. You just weren't able to notice because you needed to try another trick and just create him. And now he's there. He always was there. Um, so now go ahead and walk towards him and receive a hug from him and enjoy the, the beautiful fragrant way that he smells energetically because there's something about that too that is very comforting or um, is something very secure. It just He's just, I don't know, he smells lovely like a, like a flower. He just does. And there's something about that. And so he's hugging you once more. You can make up any space you want in order to receive a hug from me and to work on developing your your senses sense of sense of color um, sense of smell sense of touch T touch the flower petals feel how soft they are in the energy space um, allow yourself to touch the grasses touch the soil um, feel the breeze on the air is it warm here is it cold here allow yourself to to take um, notice of the details of whatever place you want to suddenly visualize that you're in um, it could even be a heavenly space full of soft white clouds and golden light shining down. Um, and you can go there and just discover what is it, what is there. Um, it could be a hot tub um, in a tropical Hawaiian place. Like it could be anything. It could be a hot tub on the top of a cold mountain. Um, it could be anything. You could go to a Buddhist temple and um, experience them um, banging on the gong and receive healing from Buddha himself. Um, it's your choice, your visualization, but use this to to start working on energy feelings. Um, hear the gong sound, feel the vibrations emanating into you, discover the gong is within your heart, look at Buddha's face, feel that Buddha is here, see Buddha is here, even if he's like the, you know, he could be a skinny man or he could be a very heavy set man and receive a hug from him. There's something lovely about um, discovering what you're capable of um, because you are capable of it. And um, that is that is that is the message. That's the message. Um, that's all I can say, Samara. This is really fun and it's going to give you a lot to think about and some techniques to try out. And thank you. Thank you so much for this experience. I really enjoyed it a lot. Um, and for those of you watching, if you're interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Thank you all for watching, and I wish you all a wonderful day.